Canada Goose, the North Face, and Patagonia dominate the outdoor clothing world, and they owe all of that to one man. They also owe it to the invention of polyester fleece. One man who in 1936, on a trip with his fishing buddy on the way back to his car, fell against a tree, almost frozen to death, before firing two shots in the air to alert his best friend he was going to die. That man's name? Edward Bauer. Without Eddie Bauer, there would be no Patagonia down jackets or North Face jackets or Canada Goose. But funny enough, we will briefly touch on today how Canada Goose got so good at making jackets that they learned how to from Eddie Bauer and then did it better and made jackets for Eddie Bauer. I love Eddie Bauer because he was nuts and extreme, and I like extreme nuts. When he made a down-filled sleeping bag, down known to be incredibly light, he made it weigh 18 Pounds. Today we will be telling the story of the first ever down jacket, the 1937 Skyliner by Eddie Bauer, and how it actually did make brands like Patagonia, the North Face, Canada Goose, and everything, the brands that we know today. And although the story is amazing, I also kind of think it got over-exaggerated over the years, and to put it frankly, it's full of lies and myths. I'm going to do my absolute best to be a Mythbuster today, because that show got cancelled, I think because a cannonball flew into someone's house during an experiment, it wasn't even on purpose. Also, in the 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, and 70s, a lot of down jackets were made using a material that I think most hikers today would not wear because they'd be afraid that it would kill them. What's up, everyone? It's Michael. It's almost Thanksgiving. I'm pretty excited about that. Temperature is cooling down, and I'm wearing down jackets. What could be better than that? First myth is that Eddie Bauer invented the down jacket. The first down jackets recorded were in 18th century Russia, and the front, like, boob octagon thing in the front there, that is full of eider down which is one of the warmest and rarest down fills that you could possibly get. And also, I'm sorry in advance for how I'm pronouncing this, but the Ainu people who are indigenous to the island of Hokkaido wore seabird down jackets, and they kept the down in the jackets, I think, with the skins of the birds. Eddie Bauer didn't invent the down jacket technically, but he popularized it. Nobody was walking around wearing giant fur coats or seabird skins regularly before that. They were all wearing wool. And interestingly, although he invented the down jacket... Yeah, I did just go on a a pedantic rant saying that you can't say invented and then I immediately said invented. I replaced the word invented with popularized. Sorry about that. Happy Thanksgiving. What Eddie Bauer really wanted to protect was this diamond shape because down runs into some issues when you stuff it inside of a jacket and he wanted to fix that. We'll read some accounts from people that tried this jacket for the first time in 1937 and see what they had to say later. So in 1936 Eddie Bauer ordered 25 pounds of goose down. Enough I guess to make almost two of his sleeping bags. And you may be thinking, Michael, how did Eddie Bauer know where to find 25 pounds of goose down? Well, he also invented the shuttlecock. He took the 25 pounds of goose down, brought it to a seamstress and said, hey, can you put this down in this material and make it a quilt jacket? I assume that the seamstress said yes, otherwise Eddie Bauer probably left out the part where she said no and Eddie was like, why? She's like, I just don't feel like doing that. I'm actually really behind with all these other things that aren't weird. And I think you should take your business somewhere else. And Eddie said, fine, I think I'll take it down the street. And that seems just said, hey, Eddie, how's it going? He said, I'm not having that good of a day today because Betsy is being a real piece. They either left that part out or the first team just said yes. And then the first jackets were made. It was 25 pounds of down. So that's obviously more than one jacket. Eddie made a bunch of jackets, had his wife try it out, which they have a very cute story where he said his wife is his greatest outdoor companion which is adorable. Eddie was concerned more about the diamond quilted patterns. Number one, down is very puffy, so if I just filled this jacket up without this sewing all throughout it, it would be a huge puffer jacket. And number two, unlike Unlike the incredibly popular insulatory material at the time, and today even, the fabric of the jacket, unlike wool, was not the insulating part of it. What was inside the jacket was the insulating part, so you needed the quilted panels to be able to hold pockets of down in areas around your body instead of having it all fall to your bottom. So the true question is, people weren't necessarily cold outside, why did they need down jackets? Waiter. Yes, madame. A glass of chêne crémeux, s'il vous plaît. All right. You may think I'm an expert sommelier, but I'm not. I just took Bright Cellar's seven question quiz and found the perfect wine for my girlfriend, Taylor. This video is sponsored by Bright Cellars because wine shouldn't be intimidating. It should be so easy to understand and pick out what's right for you that someone that doesn't even drink should be able to pick out wines that he knows his girlfriend would love. You take a seven question quiz, you get sent six wines, and then after you've tried the wines and you see what you like and what you don't like, you then rate the wines and Bright Cellars will tweak what they are sending you next to your exact 
preferences. Easy, educational, and fun. So thank you Bright Sellers for sponsoring this video and for giving us a limited time offer. Normally, all of this jazz is $150 plus dollars, but if you use the link in my description, you can get it for 55. Thank you so much, Bright Sellers. Goodbye. C'est parti. So the true question is, people weren't necessarily cold outside. Why did they need down jackets? In fact, those 18th century people that had the first ever down jackets in the world, they were mostly made out of fur. They wrote pompous essays about how warm their jackets were. I'm sick of people asking me how the weather is because frankly, I have no idea. It feels the same outside as it does inside. It's like I brought the house with me. Down was such a big deal because of its warmth to weight ratio. So while you could have a wool jacket and a down jacket keep you the same level of warm, the wool jacket would be way heavier than the down jacket. There were a number of drawbacks though that I feel like Eddie Bauer conveniently kind of glosses over. So we shall now venture into myth number two. Eddie Bauer was fishing with his friend. He caught a lot of fish and he put them in a bag. Then he had to hike back to his car. He and his friend were carrying big sacks of fish on their back as they do and they were getting sweaty and tired because of their very heavy woolen clothes. So they both took theirs off and they walked around in wool undershirts and underwear back to the car. As Eddie Bauer was walking back to his car, he started to catch hypothermia and slow down until he dropped down by a tree. You would assume he's going to die, but thankfully he pulled out his pistol, he fired two shots in the air, his friend came to save him, and so is history. He survived. Colin Berg, the historian at Eddie Bauer, says he realized what he needed was a really breathable, warm jacket that he wouldn't have to take off when he was working strenuously in the cold. Wool garments in general kind of fit the bill that Colin Berg is describing better than down jackets. They're more breathable, you could wear it during work and all that. I don't know how the wool jacket would have caused this besides it was overbuilt for the temperature that he was in. I could be wrong, but the story seems true, but that it did get rolled up more and more and more and more until it sounds like the only thing that could have saved Eddie Bauer was a down jacket. When in fact, a wool jacket would have been better for the conditions because it was getting wet. And if down gets wet, it doesn't keep you warm like wool does. And I think Eddie Bauer probably thought as he was dying or when he was recovering, I bet I could make a jacket that I would rather wear outside and boom, you have the 1937 Skyliner jacket. The only difference between this one and the real, well, there's a few differences obviously, but the main difference is these sleeves are also down filled. The original were lined in alpaca. The shame for us in 2023 is that it's hard to fully grasp how revolutionary a down jacket would have been to anyone that never had a down jacket or held one in their lives before. This is what people from the 1930s said about their jackets. My husband thinks his down jacket is lit. His wool fit was mid, but this is, no, just kidding. My husband thinks his down jacket is the best thing that was ever made, wrote a New Hampshire wife. And Mrs. Lee said, I wear it every day out of doors. I didn't buy any woolen underwear. People are literally saying, Eddie, I don't even need to wear underwear anymore. I didn't buy any woolen underwear, but with this jacket on, I don't need any underwear. I would love to write to North Face and say, your jackets are so good. Good. I'm not wearing underwear anymore. But his big break was World War II, as was, I guess, so many people's big break in a terrible way. That is our final myth here, the B9 parka. And this actually may not be a myth, but Eddie Bauer made the B9 parka and was allowed to put his name on it. And the myth is that the B9 parka could keep you afloat with 25 pounds of gear on your back if you were to fall in the water. That's obviously, that's not how down jackets work. That is a myth, unless he was allowed to insert personal flotation devices somewhere in the jacket. So now, Patagonia, North Face, Canada Goose are about to enter the scene. Originally, Eddie Bauer, the outside shell of the jackets were made out of cotton and they had expedition cloth, which is this 1970s Eddie Bauer that you've been seeing throughout the video. 100% Egyptian cotton twill, which nowadays people that are actually out in the elements all day would probably be like, no way am I wearing cotton outside. So now we use a nylon blend, but Eddie Bauer, the man was apparently so worried about durability and was unsure that nylon was as strong as cotton because it was so lightweight that it took him a very long time to accept that his jackets could be made out of nylon. And even then, it was a nylon cotton blend. Canada Goose says it's because it will allow your jacket to patina over time, but I don't think that's what a Canada Goose customer wants. I think the real reason is nylon, although it's way stronger than cotton at a lighter weight, it doesn't breathe. And Eddie Bauer wanted a breathable, lightweight jacket. And if you cover yourself in plastic, it's worse. As I said before, down jackets are great, but the toughest part about them is stuffing them evenly so there are no cold spots. Eddie Bauer was good at that, but the traditional method was stuffing the pockets of cotton or whatever they were filling with down by hand. Canada Goose changed that. They essentially made a machine that did it for you, but better. I think they called it the down stuffing machine and it just blew the down into the jacket. And they got so good at it that essentially they started making jackets for everybody else. That machine that Canada Goose invented in the 70s, could be the late 60s, was vital for virtually 
literally every other brand that was making denim jackets to be able to do it cost effectively and to honestly probably go through Canada Goose for the most part. And that is how we had the birth of North Face in the late 60s and then Patagonia in the early 70s. Eddie Bauer invents the jacket in the 1930s. Canada Goose perfects the methods of production in the 1970s. Patagonia and the North Face, who were largely famous, who were largely famous for the polyester fleece garments, then started to jump into the down jacket space, combine some of their technologies, and boom. That is how we have the modern down jacket. I hope you're all doing well. Happy Thanksgiving if, you know, you celebrate Thanksgiving, if you live in America. If not, happy whatever day this is released. I will see you all very soon. I think we're going for a hike.